Hi, this is Paul, and this is a quick introduction to the custom scripts I've written for Studio One for use with the P1M and V1M from Icon. I'm demonstrating here on the P1M. The V1M works uh, in exactly the same way. So the most obvious difference between this and the Mackie script is that we've got four lines of text, and this makes it a lot easier to use because you've got a lot more information. So for example, we've got track numbers here, and there's also a selection marker on each track. You can also see the automation mode. So if we put this snare into read mode or latch mode, you can see exactly what automation modes are on each track. Incidentally, on the V1M, the bottom two lines here are, are not displayed on the top display, they're displayed on the uh, on the strip on the actual surface itself above the faders. So we've also got track colors working um, and that makes it a lot easier uh, to see where you are um, as you're banking around. You can see exactly what where you are in your session if you use color coding. And also this script allows you to control many more features within the DAW. So for example, whether the sends are pre or post fader, you can control cue mixes and channel macros. The time code has been improved quite a bit. Uh, so you can see there's no leading zeros now. So uh, you've got a lot more room between each of the segments. And there's also a dot uh, between each segment as well. So that's a lot more readable. The metering has also been improved. So on the Mackie scripts, zero dB came in at around uh, the third orange segment. It was about halfway up the third orange segment. So not really any of any use. It was just a light show. Uh, but now on these scripts, the 0 dB is right at the top of the orange segments. Um, so you can easily see when you're clipping now because the the, uh, the red clip light comes on at anything over 0 dB. The top of the green segments is minus 12 dB. You can also switch the meters into gain reduction mode by pressing the flip key. So with flip engaged, uh, we're now seeing gain reduction. So this kick here has got a gate on it. So this is showing you the gate opening and closing. The DI here, the base DI, has got a compressor on it. And you can see it's doing around 3, sometimes 4 dB of compression. And so you can just count the segments there at the bottom. So it's showing you actual real useful information. So the master meter is also working. So if I put this into master mode now and make this the master fader, the meter here is now showing you the output of the master bus. And if you've got the V1M, uh, then you have dedicated stereo masters and those stereo master meters will, uh, will work and they will show you independent left and right channel values. One of the main drawbacks of the Mackie scripts was that it didn't keep the DAW console in sync with what was going on on the, uh, on the icon surface. But my scripts ensure that the DAW follows the controller. So if we... Uh, bank over, for example, at the moment we're on the left hand side of this uh, of the console here with the uh, the drums. Um, if we bank on the console and we go over, say, to the these ARP channels or maybe the piano channel, let's select the piano channel. And as I select that, you'll see that the console jumps to show you the, the track you're selecting. And then you can see that the piano has, uh, has come into view. Also works in a reverse. So if we go over back to the, uh, let's say the snare drum, let's say we select that. Now, if we want that, if we want on the console now to see the selected track, we just hit the locate button and that will bank the console so that we can see the currently selected track. And there's the snare selected. Now, if you want to reset any of the values that are on the VPOT uh, rotary, so for example, this is the um, input gain now. Um, so if I want to reset that to zero, um, I can engage the shift mode. And for that, I can just hold down shift and click the hi-hat. And now it's reset that to zero dB. Um, alternatively, you can lock the shift on by tapping it and then lock it, take it off again by tapping it again. Same thing for the uh, faders. So uh, if we want this fader back to zero, engage the shift mode, tap the fader, and it goes back to zero. Another great feature is the VCA and bus spill modes. Let's go to this guitar VCA here. Um, if I have that selected, 
I can then go to the second uh, screen here and I can select the spill feature and that will show me the VCA that I've selected, but it will also show me everything that VCA is controlling. So you can now see that there's the guitar and the three guitar channels that it's controlling. And then I can make independent adjustments within the group. And then to return to normal, I can just take the spill mode off again. It also works with buses because there's a synth bus here. So let's select that one and then I can spill the synth bus and then I can see all my synths going into that bus. Uh, it also works with effects tracks as well. Uh, now we've also got plugin control on here. So let's go back here and select the plugin scene. So now you can see I've got a gate plugin on the kick channel. And if I click this uh, VPOT, it will open the gate plugin for me on the screen. It will also now go into plugin control mode. And now I've already mapped some of the plugin parameters to the control surface and they appear uh, here. You can see um, on these VPOTs here, I've got uh, the open threshold, the attack time, and you can see as I change it, it's showing me the actual value of the attack time there. On the fader here, I've put the range. So when you're in plugin control mode, you can map the rotary encoders, you can map any of the faders, and you can map the select buttons to do on off type functions or where you have a number of options to sort of step through those options. So that gives you 24 controls that you can map, but you also have eight pages. So if you see here on the bottom here, we've got the page number. So I can step through each page by clicking this button here. So you have 24 controls per page. You've got eight pages. So that's a total of 192 controls that you can map to any particular plugin. So if you'd like to try the scripts, then you can go to my forum and that link is in the description below. You can download the scripts from there and you can get all the documentation that you need. And there's also links to the full user guides uh, in video form and also um, a video for showing you how to install it. Um, thanks for listening and I'll see you on the next video.